I am kind of in shock and disbelief at the moment and I'm not sure what I should be feeling. A part of me feels like my life is over and another part of me feels relieved for some reason, like I expected this to happen because I allowed the devil to come to my life and destroyed it. I am 24 years old and my husband whom I love is 26 years old. Soon to be ex-husband if the baby I am carrying turns out to not be his. When we met in college, he was serving part-time as an army reserve, so sometimes he would be gone for months. He has always been so incredibly supportive of me and is mostly everything I would want in a partner. He's very successful, smart, caring, and makes me feel so safe. As an added bonus, he even cooks and cleans. I don't think I have ever been able to relax and be my true self around anyone else till before him, although everything changed when I met Sarah, the woman that would come to destroy my life, more on that later. After six months of dating, we introduced each other to our families. My parents loved him because we shared the same values, he was religious, God-fearing and loves his country, and my dad was sold. My dad is a veteran, and was fond of my then-boyfriend, and he thought I had found the right person. As our relationship grew, I came to appreciate how much I miss him when he is deployed. You don't appreciate how much you miss someone until they are gone. Our relationship was like an emotional roller coaster from periods of missing him when he is gone till the anticipation of when he returns home. He made a commitment to marry me after we graduate from college. It took an additional two years for him to graduate after I did. I had already started working and was a young professional with my own apartment. He would stay with me when he is not in school or deployed, so he wasn't around most of the time. I am not good at making friends, so I get lonely without him around. He encouraged me to get out of my comfort zone and to meet people and do activities with people. I started to get involved in more outdoor activities. I always knew deep inside that there was a wild side of me that just need a little spark to be lit up, but it's being kept in check because of my religious upbringing, I was afraid of what people would say and how people would judge me, I wanted to be the perfect girlfriend, the perfect daughter, the perfect everything and it was really difficult to be myself around people that I grew up with, simply because I had an image to live up to. Perhaps that was why I gravitated towards Sarah and her boyfriend Matt, people that I would consider the opposite of me, people that I should have run away from. They were wild, had tattoos and very much free spirit, they smoke, drink, and live what I would consider a careless life. They were adventurous and allowed nothing to hold them back from trying new things, traveling to new places, they were both smart and were software engineers, so they were able to work remotely and travel around the world. I met them at a kayaking event, and we quickly became close friends, since my boyfriend wasn't home most of the time, I became the third wheel in their relationship. Sarah and Matt were outgoing, and we would hang out after our kayaking activities, sometimes we would talk on the phone and have lunch together, we weren't close friends yet but were walking towards it. I still felt like there was a part of them that I didn't know about because they wouldn't invite me out to social events or to their home. When my then-boyfriend visited, we would always try to do something with them as to introduce my boyfriend to my new friends, but they were always busy. I soon realized that there was something interesting about Sarah and Matt's relationship that would change my life forever. One Saturday Matt was absent, I went with Sarah and another group of people to kayak, after that, while having lunch, she came clean when she told me that she and Matt are in an open relationship and sometimes would swing and attend orgies. It shouldn't come as a surprise because I had already suspected something, but I was shocked by what she told me, looking back she was already giving me hints so it shouldn't have come as a surprise. When I wondered why she hadn't told me earlier since I thought we were friends. She said that it's an unconventional lifestyle and people tend to judge them for it. So, they chose to keep those parts of their life hidden. Sarah did not pressure or ask me to join her. She merely told me because she was getting tired of making excuses to why she couldn't meet up, and to be honest when she told me about her lifestyle, I passed judgment on them initially but then I realized how happy they always were together and how they were supportive of each other. I welcome moments when my morality is challenged, when my beliefs are questioned, for those are the moments that provide the most opportunity to grow and expand my understanding of the world. After Sarah told me about her lifestyle, I couldn't stop thinking about it, especially when my boyfriend isn't home. 
The ideal has been planted like a seed in my mind and that was all I thought about when I was alone. I began to envision myself with another man, then I started watching adult contents that involves groups, threesome and being with both men and women. It led me on a vivid dream of self-discovery of my dark side because I became obsessed with self-pleasure, watching adult content, BDSM and the idea of being dominated. Up till then sex with my boyfriend had been pretty vanilla. Eventually, Sarah started opening up to me about her soul escapades with her boyfriend and how much fun they were having. After an event I would be the first person she would call to share it with, I was the friend from the other side of the fence. I was a newbie to that world with lots of questions and it encouraged her to share more and more, listening to her added some excitement to my boring and sometime lonely life and I looked forward to her stories and experiences, living vicariously through her. I was open-minded and non-judgmental, which allowed me to create a safe space to express myself authentically. I felt comfortable sharing my fantasies with her and I found our conversation a sanctuary where vulnerabilities are celebrated rather than condemned. Sometimes I would pleasure myself hoping and wishing I could experience the same. I noticed that my libido increased significantly as a result of our now frequent conversations and my boyfriend noticed as well and was pleased. I thought maybe once my boyfriend graduates and we are married, we would move in together and Sarah's lifestyle would all be some forgotten fantasy and a thing of the past. I was convinced I would always be longing for the outside and how it was all a fantasy and a lifestyle choice that I hoped for but would never taste when I told my boyfriend that Sarah and her boyfriend were in an open relationship. He was shocked and couldn't imagine how Matt would allow his girlfriend to have sex with other men. He passed judgment so quickly at them and expressed disgust towards their lifestyle, he told me to stay away from them. His disapproval of their lifestyle didn't come as a surprise to me because we came from a conservative background and we used to share the same morality. In a way, his repudiation of that lifestyle made me realize how far off-center I had become because I used to be on the right of him. My boyfriend proposed to me. Then a few months before we got married, Sarah and Matt invited me to an orgy party where they had group SX with two other couples, and I watched. I didn't participate or felt pressured to, and they didn't care that I was watching. I was walking from the living room to the bedroom watching everyone having SX like I was in an adult movie set. A few months later after we tied the knot, we bought a house and moved in together, he was still in the army reserved and attending training most weekends which allows me enough time to hang out with friends. A few months into our marriage, we were getting stronger as a couple, we enjoyed each other's company, frequent SX, and appreciated each other's time since he wasn't always home. My friendship with Sarah was hidden as a secret from my husband, a harmless fictional addiction that energized my real life. After six months of marriage, we wanted to start a family so we decided that I should stop using birth control. Two weeks after I went off birth control, Sarah informed me about an upcoming orgy, she builds up this one in particular like it was special because of the sheer number of people that would be present. Up until now it seemed like she had been building me up to this moment for months, since she opened up to me about her lifestyle, and she was inviting me to at least watch. She said it was more of a regular party than an orgy and most people there were just there for the party, I thought maybe she was just softening me up to the idea. She knew that I was doing it behind my husband's back and knew I would get in trouble if he found out that I was still hanging out with her, he would definitely divorce me if he found out that I escorted her to an orgy, even if I was only there to watch. I wasn't sure why Sarah enjoyed sharing her experiences with me, I didn't feel pressured, just felt like a nudge from a caring friend that wanted me to get a taste of freedom from my sheltered life. She told me that the orgy was going to take place at a wealthy friend's house, and they weren't sure how many couples would be there. The last time they went last year it was huge. She told me that their hosts were a wealthy couple, and they usually host large parties but not very often, maybe once a year. Prior to meeting Sarah and Matt, I didn't know there was a community of people like this, it was like a new underworld that was non-existent till now. She joked that it was non-existent to me because I haven't been looking for them. Once I started looking into that lifestyle and made some friends with people Sarah and Matt introduced me to, it felt like everyone was doing it and my traditional lifestyle was an unconventional one. They were like regular people, unlike Sarah and Matt. 
Sarah would describe most orgies group as an average of four to six couples and would run into about 20 couple in a larger city, and even then, about 50% of the people they met were experimenting and most of them would be done after their first experience. It made me feel like I wasn't the only one coming to witness and that it wasn't something that I would look out of place there because there were people like me. On the day of the orgy party, we went to the wealthy couple's house, and sure enough it was as Sarah described. Large groups of over 200 plus people there, I would come to find out that most people there weren't aware that there is an orgy in a different area of the large mansion that only a selected few had access to. Unfortunately, I was one of them thanks to Sarah and Matt. Only about less than 30 people were there at the orgy section. The rest were just socializing like it was just another house party hosted by a wealthy fellow with free food and drink flowing like a water fountain. We went to a different section of the house where there was a beautiful living room, fashioned as a ballroom, with high ceiling and expensive chandelier hanging in the middle of the room and ancient Roman and Greeks adult paintings on the walls. There was a bar at the corner with a bartender serving drinks and desserts and a surround sound of soft music. I could see a reflection of a glow of purple light coming from three large bedrooms and inside the bedrooms were the largest circular community bed that I have ever seen and some soft pillows arranged beautifully around the edges of the enormous bed, all three rooms looked the same and instead of the room being separated by walls, they were separated by curtains. Clearly this section's compartment of the house was built for orgies by the devil. I never imagined that in the next few minutes this place was going to look like an adult movie set, considering that the people were so normal and nice. There were less than 30 or so people there, most of them seemed to know each other, walking around and introducing each other, they all seemed like people you would meet from my various walks in life. Nothing to me indicated that it was the beginning stage of an orgy. I tried to stick close to Sarah and Matt but it was difficult because they were busy with friends, and I was the new girl on the block, so every boy and girl wanted to be friends with me. They all slowly trickled into the bedroom, and I excused myself to go to the bathroom to catch a breath. When I came out of the bathroom the bartender and I were the ones in the ballroom. I lost touch with Sarah and Matt, and I could imagine that their voice is part of the large moaning noise coming from the bedroom as I stood nervously with my drink clenched to my chest. I felt like returning back to the main area where all the normal people were, till a man that had been interested in me since I got there walked out of the bedroom with only a towel around his waist and stopped me. He was attractive and gentle, he wasn't forceful or pressuring me on anything, so I felt comfortable with him. I was happy to be speaking with him because I felt abandoned by Sarah and Matt. The ambience made it easy for me to get in the mood and we ended up making out in the living room that was the first time I kiss anyone since I started dating my now husband. I was so turned on that I wanted to go third base with him, I swear something about the environment increased my libido and caused me to lose control, I slowly went on my knees and went down on him right in the middle of the ballroom floor. He led me by the hand and walked me to the bedroom where some of the people were in their own world on the bed, concentrated on each other. He wears protection, and we started going at it in the bedroom floor at a corner on a pillow while I still had my dress on. Not so long after we started, I snapped to my senses and pushed him away from me, I fixed my dress and slowly walked out the bedroom, then out the ballroom, and then joined the rest of the regular people as I waited for Matt and Sarah to finish up and come out so we could go home. About two hours later, they came out, they didn't ask me what happened or why I left the orgy early or if I did anything. They didn't even talk about what happened in the orgy, it was like they went on a trip to the circus and came out with bust of energy like they have been rejuvenated with drugs of excitement. I didn't feel judged, and I thought it was liberating that they understood that everyone has a unique journey, shaped by their experiences, beliefs, and values. When I am with them, I let go of my own biases and preconceptions, allowing each conversation to unfold organically, I embrace the unpredictability and spontaneity when I am around them. No topic is off-limit, no idea too unconventional or controversial. While my husband was out of town, I would attend four additional smaller group orgies with Sarah and Matt, and I felt comfortable enough this time to go all the way without having to run off in the middle. On those four orgies, I engaged in soul act with multiple men. 
Unfortunately, I remember on some occasions where I would allow men without protection when I was caught up in the heat of the moment, or when the protection breaks, I would always catch myself because the number one rule is to use protection against unwanted pregnancy and contracting any STDs, the number one rule there is to use protection and I should have known better. Because the dire consequences would soon come back to haunt me, but I digress. During the period I was attending these orgies I still had an active SX life with my husband, our SX life intensified even more than before, because I was trying out new things that I haven't done in the early stages of our relationship. I stopped attending those parties after I found out that I was two months pregnant. Then four months into the pregnancy, Sarah and Matt found a lucrative job in Washington State where they always wanted to move to, and they relocated. Soon after they left, my phone calls with them slowly dwindled until they quickly became far and in between, till they stopped responding to my phone calls entirely. I checked that to the fact that we grew distance and my husband, and I concentrated on my pregnancy. Right about that four-month period, while my husband was at work, I went for a regular prenatal checkup due to some discomfort, further testing was needed. Some blood tests were conducted, and it was determined that my blood type was mismatched with the baby. I didn't know what that meant so the doctor explained that I was making antibodies against the fetal blood cell that cross back through the placenta and affects the baby's development and destroying the baby's circulating red blood cells. The news scared me to death, he explained that this condition occurred because my husband and I were RH incompatibility. Since I was RH negative, he assumed my husband is RH positive, since our baby has RH positive blood inherited from my husband. I felt stupid for not even having knowledge of blood type compatibility. I didn't know my blood type before my pregnancy and had never had a reason to check. When I told the doctor that my husband was in the Army Reserves, he assumed that he should know his blood type because service members conduct regular checkups and the likelihood of injuries that would require blood transfusion. We got my husband on the phone while he was at work and the doctor explained the situation to him. My husband responded when asked saying that his blood type is RH negative. My husband was at work so my doctor requested that he come in as soon as possible for confirmation. At that moment my heart dropped, I knew exactly what happened, my husband may not be the father of the baby growing inside me. I got scared and panicked, I ran out of the doctor's office and called my husband, I convinced him that it was a case of mistaken identity, and he doesn't have to come to the doctor's office. He was confused at first, but I managed to set his mind at ease. When I got off the phone, I was convinced that my husband believed me. I was still consumed by sorrow, shame, and regret. I had no one to talk to, even Sarah, that led me astray, would not answer my calls. When my husband returned home from work, we talked about the mistaken identity briefly, and I thought he was convinced. The following day I quickly switched doctors and convinced the other doctor that I was a single mom, so the unborn child would receive the proper medical attention because removing the baby was out of the question and would cause more problems. Unbeknownst to me, my husband wasn't convinced by my story, so he went back to my formal doctor and still went through the test to confirm that he was correct about his blood type. He came back home that evening and asked me why I lied to him about the identity mismatch. I was shocked and dumbfounded. He pressured me to come clean and I had no choice but to come clean and tell him that it was possible that he wasn't the father of the baby. I was more scared that he was going to leave me and I would be stuck alone with the pregnancy. I apologized to him that it was a mistake, but he wouldn't listen, and then he requested the name of my affair partner, and he was shocked to find out that I couldn't remember because it involves multiple men. He called me all kinds of names that frankly I didn't think was necessary. He left home three weeks ago and has never come back home. He told my parents what happened, and my dad wouldn't speak to me. He blocked me on everything and said that we are going to get a divorce. My mom and a close friend are the only people that I have right now, I am currently six months pregnant, and I am still hoping and praying that somehow when I have this baby, we would do a DNA test to prove that it was his, it's a long shot but that is the only thing I could think of at the moment. Do any one of you have any advice on what I should do?